Welcome back to Let's Roleplay Pillars of Eternity with me, Libertacus, as the narrator. If you haven't seen the previous episode, I suggest you do that before watching this one. Now then, let's get back to the Grinch and his adventures. Heoden is held hostage with a sword at his troth by a Glanfathon man. This man is one of the so-called savages guarding the ruins of Eir Glanfath. In ancient times, Eir Glanfath was a great nation. Scholars today still marvel at some of their architectural and astronomical feats. But today only ruins remain, and those few misguided souls who guards them. Lay down your arms, trespasser. Don't forfeit this man's life for a fight you'll lose. In other circumstances, the Grinch might find this situation funny, the idea of losing this fight. But with the massacre in front of him, he coldly and simply responds that the caravaneers haven't laid a hand on the ruins. Your words are wind. I've seen the truth with my own eyes. Y'all are paying in blood for trespassing. I'm telling you, lay down your arms. The Grinch makes an educated guess about the Glanfathan's deity, Galloway, god of the hunt. He goes on to reason that the god favoring youth and strength before weakness and age would never command some old crumbling ruins to be preserved long after their builders had met their demise. The Glanfathan loses both the argument and the initiative. He then breaks free from his grip and the fight is on. If the god Galloway is truly watching and favoring the strong, it's no surprise that the Grinch and his group stands victorious after a short fight. They're not safe yet. A wind is growing in strength, a spirit wind, also known as a Beowick. It is said that this wind rips the soul from one's body. By the strength and feel of the wind, the Grinch is starting to believe the rumors. The caravan master Odima, barely alive, urges them with his last breath to seek shelter in the ruins. The group of weary travelers make haste towards the ruins and begin scaling the cliffs leading up to them. Hiadun trails behind, slowed by his injury and earlier hesitation. One of the attackers who faint death earlier lunges for Hiadun and tackles him to the rocky ground. They grapple briefly before the Grinch makes a fast decision and fires a bolt of energy at the attacker. The bolt connects with the attacker and frees Hiaden to move to the top, with some help from the Grinch at the end. As the wind grows stronger, the party makes their way into the ruins in the nick of time. The archway they enter through crumbles and collapses in on itself, but they're safe from the storm now. Marveling at their luck and continued survival, they catch their breath for a while, before moving further into the old ruins. They discuss what to do next and reason that the Glanfathons were probably upset because someone else was pillaging from the ruins. So they might have company down here. They continue exploring the ruins in search of another way out and hoping that any intruders are long gone. During their exploration, they encounter various creatures. Axorib, a lizard-like humanoid creature. Some Skulder, nocturnal cave-dwelling creatures, also humanoid. And some Black Ooze, strange aggressive blobs. All of which they kill. They also find a dead human scavenger with a journal detailing where in the ruins there might be treasure. The treasure is found behind a fake wall. The key is a gem inserted into the eye socket of a face sculpted into the wall of the crumbling ruins. Needlessly complicated if you ask the Grinch. The treasure consists of a magical cloak and some valuable gems. The eerie feeling of the ruins is starting to get to them. So they almost miss a bunch of floor tiles with pressure plates rigged to cause a fiery explosion upon being stepped on. Luckily, Hiaden is well versed in disarming mechanical traps, so they're able to bypass them without too much trouble. 
In their search for a way out, they break through one of the walls with chisels and hammers. It's not a wall necessary for the structural integrity of the place, but it does make some noise when they break through. When they finally find an exit, they've been down in the ruins for hours, and it seems like the storm has ended. They decide to venture outside. The party walks out into the sunlight, into a clearing with crumbling pillars and odd structures made of stone. They see a couple of robed figures gathered before a bizarre ancient apparatus made of chiseled Audra and metallic veins looming ominously over them. Audra is a type of green stone. It is said to have roots to the heart of the world. It's more of a shell than actual rock and has strange properties. Some believe it used to grow at some point in time, but not anymore. It loses its luster if dug up. If it has life, one could say it dies when separated from its roots. The robed figures stands around a human body, colorless as stone or ash. The Grinch sees the face of one of the figures distantly. The face is covered with oily grey hair and a large beard. The man's robes are embroidered with an unfamiliar, runic language. The older man speaks to the petrified body, then to the others. Oathbinder bear witness, and see this man has kept his word true to his last breath, full to his blood's last drop. Guide his soul, queen that was, and regard it among your favored. Let his life by the key be his confession. Let his death by the key be his absolution. May he walk the world ever free of the crushing weight of the book. Your brother has done his part, and you have seen the power of his contribution. I will accept no further hesitation from the rest of you. In the sight of the queen that was, will you fulfill the oath? Will you take your place beside your brother in the endless esteem of her memory that is without law? Step forth. Be assured of the great worth of your life's course. Then, the older man walks away from the clearing, and the others seem to be chanting and focusing on the odd structure. The Grinch can feel a strange flow of arcane power, and the feel of the Beowick returns. The robed figures are operating the structure. For a short instance, the structure goes quiet, and the air still. Then, in a concussive surge, it erupts, flooding the Grinch and the others with a bright light and a wave of force, knocking them to the ground. The Grinch hits the back of his head on the hard ground and slips into unconsciousness. When he opens his eyes again, he's standing in a different place. He is in a large domed circular room, its walls lined with Audra and trimmed with copper. The style is ancient, but the chamber looks unweathered. The far end is pierced by a giant pillar of Audra, coming through the floor like a spike. The shimmering texture giving it the illusion of boundless depth. There's an apparatus, much like the one the Grinch saw moments ago, intertwined with the pillar. Unfamiliar thoughts fills the Grinch's head. They belong, and don't belong. All of them are questions, troubling questions, that demand answers, or else. Or else. At the base of the pillar stands a man with a thick grey beard and ceremonial robes, oily hair tucked beneath a black cowl and a strange but familiar headdress. The Grinch knows the man and is walking towards him with one burning question to ask. One question, above all the others, spins madly in his mind. And this is where we leave the Grinch for now.